So I want to tell you, 2,000 years ago, one of the sages wrote the following piece of advice. Do not make conversation with the woman. It'll destroy your life. Don't make conversation. What does that mean? You have two men sitting on an airplane or two women sitting on an airplane for eight hours right next to each other, and they don't say a word because they have nothing to say. But if it's a man and a woman sitting next to each other, oh, they've got so much to discuss. You make conversation when you have nothing to say. Don't do that. Wait, can I ask something controversial? Oh, sure. <laughs> why, why won't you shake hands with a woman? You only answer that. That sounds, <laughs> but isn't that sexist or? Yes. <clears throat> if sexist means recognizing the differences between men and women, yes. I don't know why that's a negative. It shouldn't be. Men are men, women are women. You know, you can't fool Mother Nature. You got to be true to nature. And if you're not intimate, then, then don't be. Don't, let's not make believe. So the beauty of it is shaking hands used to be a meaningful thing. There was some feeling behind it. There was some closeness behind it. It is, after all, a friendly gesture, I think. <laughs> it's supposed to imply some kind of a friendship, some kind of a closeness, vulnerability even. Because back in the olden days, you shook hands to show that you're not carrying a weapon. Here, look, you see? No weapon. So, <laughs> it used to have meaning. And then it became just, uh, I don't know what. But that's sad. Because anything that can be preserved as part of your intimate life should be. Because our intimate lives have become so empty. So if shaking hands is a meaningful thing, then it should be reserved for meaningful relationships. So I, I joke about this, but when people say, shaking hands is meaningless, it's nothing, it, it doesn't... If you ever shake hands with somebody and they hold your hand two seconds longer than necessary, all of a sudden you're so uncomfortable. Like, you pervert, let go of my hand. <laughs> like, what, what happened? Is it just a handshake? It's not just. You can't, you can't fool nature. So we respect intimacy. And if you want to talk about the whole subject in, in the larger picture, the Me Too movement, where women are objecting to being, um, to being mistreated or disrespected or whatever, it's not because men don't respect women. And yeah, well, that's true too, but that's an old story. <laughs> it's because today in most of the world, we have no respect for intimacy. We play with it like it's, like it's a game. And it started in the 60s, when it became popular for men and women to promote free love. What does free love mean? Free of what? Yeah. Free of meaning. Free of significance, free of importance. So for a number of years, it kind of worked. We, we became sexually liberated, but now we're paying the price. If you don't respect intimacy, you're going to abuse somebody. Purposely, accidentally, intentionally, somehow there's going to be misunderstandings. So is holding hands an intimate gesture? So the way it works today, well, if you intend it to be intimate, then you're creepy. Well, how do you know what I intend? I, I thought you intended. Oh, you didn't? Oh, you didn't? Oh, you were just being friendly. How are we supposed to know? There's going to be misunderstandings and abuse. We need to respect intimacy. So it's, it's not 
that you don't respect women. On the contrary. So you, you don't shake her hand, not because you don't view her as worthwhile, but because you don't want to send her a signal that you're, or inadvertently sending a signal that you're interested in her or something. Is that interested sexually? Or? I figure it this way. If I really want to shake her hand, then I shouldn't. And if I don't really want to shake her hand, then I shouldn't. Like, either way, if I'm really interested, I'm stepping over a, a border. If I'm not interested, it's, it's degrading. What about like in a um, professional setting where, yeah. uh, you know, a man and a woman have to collaborate on a project and in order to achieve that project, they have to view each other in a way that demonstrates equality and respect toward one another. And if the social norm is to shake hands when you start a meeting, then how can you, um, how can you avoid that norm in that kind of professional setting that, without that, coming across as disrespectful? Right. That, that's the conventional argument. It's the way things are done. You got to go with the, with the lifestyle but it would be a lot better, more meaningful, if we respected the intimacy and not used it as some kind of a social signal. <clears throat> to trust each other, whether it's between two men, two women, or a man and a woman, it has to be in consideration of who we're dealing with. It can't be generic, because then it's not really respectful at all. Like, imagine a non-Jewish man would say to me, you know, I don't really get along with Jews, but you're different. With you, I get along because I don't even think of you as a Jew. Uh, That's not very nice. No. <laughs> and, 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 and you're my friend? No, you're not. You don't even know who I am. With women, if a man says to a woman, you know, we can be friends because, you know, there's nothing, you know, not sexually attracted to you at all. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> what are the compliments you have for me today? <laughs> so, if we're going to trust each other, it has to be in consideration of and in respect of who we are, not make believe we don't notice. So, educate people so that they know why you would refuse. Yeah. Otherwise, they come up with all sorts of theories. Yeah, I think that's the number one thing that I thought before I first started uh, coming on the tour, is that it was just like you didn't like women. Mm. That just being honest. <laughs> and I think that's what my wife uh, thought, too, really? until I told her what I learned when I came. So I want to tell you, 2,000 years ago, one of the sages wrote the following piece of advice. Do not make conversation with the woman. It'll destroy your life. Hmm? What he was saying is so timely and so uh, relevant. Don't make conversation. What does that mean? You have two men sitting on an airplane or two women sitting on an airplane for eight hours right next to each other and they don't say a word. For eight hours. Because they have nothing to say. But if it's a man and a woman sitting next to each other, oh, they've got so much to discuss. They need to know the weather. They need to know the... You make conversation when you have nothing to say. So this sage, 2,000 years ago, said, don't do that. If you have nothing to say, don't say it. Now, why would you make conversation if you have nothing to say. So the wording is, is precise. Don't make conversation with the woman. Which woman? It's not which woman. If you look at women as an object, the woman, then you'll make conversation even to have nothing to say. But if you see her as a woman, you won't make conversation when you have nothing to say. So in our language, in today's language, we would say, don't objectify. Don't treat women like objects. This is 2,000 years ago. We like women. <laughs>
you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there's a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.